This is a clip from the Red Cow Arcade podcast. There was San Diego Comic Con. I, I don't think I'm not really. I don't have the wherewithal to go over like every one of these fucking Marvel projects. But I'm, is there a summary statement we can make about this? Uh, they're were well, they're ending phase. What it was four four with uh Wakanda Forever, right? Yeah, which that trailer does look pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it looks like a really I, good Avatar film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. I was thinking about that. I mean, Ryan, Ryan Coogler is a cool director and, yeah, and obviously yeah. really no. smart. And I was thinking about like good um, music design in that trailer. My goodness. Yeah. I was thinking about just how difficult it would be to make that damn movie. Like, oh, yeah, it's impossible. There, there's already with the first one, it was this triumph because there it was this political, racial you know, social kind of a movie like, you know, and it also was like the one right before infinity war and it, and it was a smash success of a billion dollars. And, you know, really, and well, plus it was like, it was a superhero character that people weren't, I mean, it wasn't like a, you know, a super well known. It was kind of like Iron Man, like where you had to build him up. Um, and he totally succeeded with it. And then you would think from there, the sequel would be easy. And, but the death of, of Chadwick is just like, now you got a, you got a hell of a project. Not only do you have to tell a story that now suddenly your main character is missing from, like you can't even like have the scene where he dies, you know? Yeah. Like the movie starts with him dead, but yeah, also it's, it's like Poochie dying off screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're not gonna, they're not stupid enough to do a princess Leia to him no. where he, in silhouette, he lays down and dies. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to die. Han. <laughs> on. <laughs> one is your heart telling you ray <laughs> i love ray acting her ass off against the cg layer. <laughs> i just don't know what to do <laughs> i just i feel it inside me but i don't know what to do about the force <laughs> when is your heart telling you ray <laughs> anyway um they are probably not gonna do that with, they're probably not gonna do that with the jello <laughs> no um so now you have to, <laughs> you have to tell you. <laughs> it's washing over me. <laughs> Just how fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Rise of Skywalker only works if you completely forget it. <laughs> if you just put it behind yourself. Um, oh, you have boy. to like squint your way through that part of the saga. Um, tell me that's a fucking kids movie guy. Sure. <laughs> Um, but I, I, yeah, now you have to like basically do a funeral for Chadwick Boseman in the movie. Cause you have to now tribute the guy, mm. you know, I think, I think rightfully, but that's, that has to be there. And you have to also pay tribute to the character while making the character, you know, it's just like, yeah, well, it's like, really yeah. hard. Well, yeah. While well, telling a story while also, yeah, like furthering a new black Panther, the legacy of black Panther, something yeah. hey, that's impossible. I would not want to do it. <laughs> And I get the impression that he figured it out, or at least that he has some kind of vision. Yeah, for there's it. there's something like I mean, it's a visual visually stunning trailer. It, yeah, I wonder if the reason that we didn't see any footage of Wakanda Forever until now, because it's coming out like in a couple of months. Yeah, it's just like a lot of other Marvel stuff was coming around, out around the same time, and they didn't want to like bury the marketing. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, I guess yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a sensitive. I just think it's a sensitive movie. I think yeah. they just had to figure out the right time to reveal it. Make sure it looks it cool. It, looks it certainly cool. looks, it looks like it, it looks like they put more ass into it than Thor love and thunder. Uh, absolutely. It looks more, yeah. more uh, beautiful, more uh, put together. Like, yeah, even the trailers for love and thunder. I was like, this looks kind of like a green screen yeah. nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> or a, a volume nightmare, volume worse. nightmare, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of volume, I, I watched the um, mm. the ILM documentary. Yeah, any good? It was very very interesting. I I, I really liked it. Um, the it's just seeing how you know like S -S Star Wars when it started, they had to just basically one start a company to make the special effects because nobody was making any of those special effects because. Every single like shot of that movie had some sort of special effects at the time, which was unheard of. So they had to like 
invent a company, then they had to invent the technology to do, you know, the star battles and, and everything, which requires cameras that you program to move in a certain way. And then you have I always, to I always saw that footage of they're in like a parking lot and they've got kind of like these toy models set up and they're just like getting those, those, those passerby shots of the little explosions on them, on the miniatures and stuff. Yeah. And you know, you, you it's, it's pretty, uh, I, I, there's mm. some things where I wish they kind of got more technical than they did. And I understand why they didn't get more technical, but I'm, you know, as a filmmaker, I want them to, but that, um, that, that Death Star trench run scene <clears throat> from a new hope is so exciting. It's such a great piece of action. And the majority of it is cockpits. It's cutting between cockpits. Yeah. You know, it really is. <clears throat> and it's, it's, it's the edit that makes it exciting. Yeah. It's when you choose to cut to a character, when you choose to cut outside of the cockpit, it's, it's really masterful. Yeah. The, and so just seeing how they did the technology, how they developed the technology, like they spent so much time developing the technology for that film that like when, George Lucas came back from England to um, after filming, you know, principal photography and they were like, he went to the studio and they only had like two shots done because they were just trying to figure out, cause they were like repurposing calculators and computers to, to do the, cause you know how you, um, cause you have to basically film stuff several times. And also, you know, you're, you're, you have the camera, you have to record the camera doing the same movements a few times right. And, right. You, and to make that match perfectly. And then, you know, they, they do that nowadays too, you know? And so I remember, I remember when Weta advanced that for, um, what, what movie was it? Uh, shit. Why can't I think of the Michael J. Fox, Peter Jackson movie, the Frighteners. Frighteners. Yeah. They were like, yeah, that, that was Weta's big thing was like, can we make, we want to do really complex shots that have layers of visual effects. And so the camera motions are going to be complex and they all have to be identical. And yeah, yeah, it was, it, that's a problem that they keep, they, for years they were iterating on. Yeah. Cause to, for the audience, like usually if you, if you have a static shot, that's just like on a tripod, you can layer in as many things as you want. But if you have a complex movement where, you know, the camera is following something or, 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 um, in the case of Star Wars, usually they use the camera to make ships move and you have a lot of elements. You have to have the camera move the same way every time. Exactly. And so you have to basically program the camera to do that every single time. And so you have, you're layering, let's say, three images, but they the illusion is that they're one image. Yes. Yeah. And so um, so it's just seeing all their problem solving with all of that. It reminds me of my job in a, a, cause you know, I'm, I do marketing <laughs> videos, but on a much smaller scale, but I can like, I'm always doing that kind of mini problem solving just so as to see it on that grand scale is so interesting. Yeah. And, and um, and then it goes through, you know, the first three uh, star Wars films and it goes through Indiana Jones and then it goes to, you know, the nineties where it's like George Lucas, he was just so frustrated with analog technology. He was basically inventing digital technology <laughs> or at least finding people who would invent that digital technology. He, he, he doesn't understand any of it, but he was just like, <laughs> he was just like, I, I like, I hate like cutting with film. I hate like, uh, analog cameras i hate all this analog stuff i just like i you, you like i need to find people who would just fix all this stuff for me <laughs> and so well, it's funny it, it, it it's like a i was talking to somebody about this just recently it, it, it's a problem that people struggle with all the time which is how can you be a leader to people who are more talented than you <laughs> how, how do you provide vision and direction for for something that you don't know how to do but you're leading a group of talented people to do and in lucas's case it's like he doesn't know a bit from a bite you know but he but he knows the problems he wants to solve yeah and he's very committed to solving those problems and, and he knows that they can to, be solved and he knows that the technology yeah. either exists or will exist that can solve it and so he was yeah. like I know you're talented. So he, he, he is really good at finding the talented people mm -hmm. because yeah. like, oh, he's a good leader. He's a great leader. And so yeah. it's like, 
you know, I, I give him a lot of crap. We give him a lot of crap for the the prequel trilogy, but I I do think the prequel trilogy like paved the way for a lot of the things that we have now where digital effects are seamless. I I do yeah. think that he because like when he did the prequels, like especially, you know, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, it's like how many elements are did like digital composites like everything <laughs> and, and nobody yeah. was doing that and he was just like yeah. why why don't we and so <laughs> and so like you know he paved the way for everything everything that we see now i remember when I, there was like a keanu reeves documentary he, he directed a documentary or, or he hosted it or something it was about digital filmmaking it was about moving from film to digital <clears throat> so naturally lucas is interviewed in it a lot and he seemed really pissed off in that particular documentary <laughs> He seemed really like he kept. Um, he seems pissed off know, all the time. Seemed, well, he's kind of pissed off in this documentary too. I think he's just really frustrated about how like things work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think he he gets frustrated by how much pushback he receives. Yeah. It's not. I mean, he gets pushback all the time. Mm. But but if 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 our ventures in TikTok have taught us anything, it's that he's also got a lot of supporters. My God. Yeah, Don't and even. and you know and he succeeded like he really did succeed because he pushed people to do the impossible. Yeah, no, I look, can't take that away from him. And yeah, the prequels were, were really important for, I mean, at least in terms of accelerating where yeah. we ultimately got, and, and, I would say Lord of the Ra Lord of the Rings was, was probably equally. Yeah. Um, and also like he was talking about how like Sony, he was trying to buy digital cameras from Sony and he was like, they have to do 24 frames per second. And Sony was like, Oh, that's too hard. We can't do that. So it's like even things like that. It's like, oh, I think George Lucas made digital cameras 24 frames per second, which is holy you know, shit for yeah. for my you know work. It's like that's great. It's uh yeah. Uh, he was just like do you ever like when <clears throat> when somebody says like I, I want to learn how to edit video or I want to learn how to do After Effects, you know, motion animation or whatever. Do you often tell people like, well, why don't you start with some problem? And then kind of work your way towards solving that problem with the software rather than like, let, you know, go through some exercises with the tutorials. And don't you feel, or at least when you're learning a new thing, don't you feel like you like to start with a problem and then be committed to solving it? it Isn't that the best way? It's kind of funny you bring that up. I'm making the, my NES uh, video right now. And I have a, I have a, a section where I talk about um, problem solving in video games. Like, puzzle games and i i related it to um to editing because editing is constantly problem solving you yeah. are like you have this fixed set of assets and right. you are trying to tell a story or convey an idea but you only have what you shot what you have right. available to you the previous things you've done you have um your skill set in motion graphics you have you have this set of things so how do you convey this idea? And um, so it was just, it's kind of it, like I related that to like puzzle solving and video games because I love those kind of games. Yeah. And, um, and that's why I love my job is because I have, uh, you know, you have a limited set of assets and you have to convey this idea. Mm -hmm. You have to do whatever. And so, yeah, I, I think any, Anybody who's looking to get into filmmaking is you just got to start making stuff. <laughs> you know, you just got to start yeah. doing it and you have to start solving those problems. Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.